Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, what I'd like to do is introduce you to the idea of the different ascending and descending spinal pathways. So hopefully you will have watched the previous parts on the spinal pathways and will understand that the ascending tracts carry sensory information from the periphery to the brain and the descending tracts carry information from the brain to the periphery. So what we're looking at here is a horizontal section of the cervical spinal cord and you'll recognize the H-shaped grey matter in the middle and around it is the white matter and there's various different shapes that you'll see here and these represent the different ascending and descending spinal pathways. So first we'll take a look at the ascending pathways. So we'll look first at the dorsal columns which convey fine touch, proprioception and vibration sense from the periphery up to the brain. So you've got the fasciculus gracilis, which I've highlighted in yellow, and you've got the fasciculus cuneatus. So just remember that fasciculus means small bundle. So the fasciculus gracilis carries information from the lower limb, so it has axons, axon fibres from the lower limb, whereas the fasciculus cuneatus has fibres from the upper limb. So the way I remember this is that the letter C is before the letter G in the alphabet, so C is higher and your upper limbs are higher than your lower limbs, so fasciculus cuneatus carries fibres from the upper limb, whereas fasciculus gracilis carries fibres from the lower limb. Now how do you remember which one is medial and which one is lateral? So in yellow we've got the fasciculus gracilis and in green we've got the fasciculus cuneatus. And how to remember this is that your arms are lateral to your legs and you know from the previous mnemonic that the fasciculus cuneatus carries fibres from the upper limb so because your arms are lateral to your legs the fasciculus cuneatus is lateral to the fasciculus gracilis in the spinal cord. So next we've got the spinothalamic tracts. So these I've just highlighted in blue and the spinothalamic tracts are also known as the anterolateral tracts as they sit anteriorly and laterally in the spinal cord. And some texts will refer to distinct anterior and distinct lateral tracts, but almost invariably there is some intermingling of fibres between the anterior and lateral tracts. So on this diagram they're represented as one tract. So the anterolateral tract is known as the spinothalamic tract, and this relays information to the somatosensory cortex regarding pain and temperature information and also crude touch. So the lateral aspect of the spinothalamic tract carries pain and temperature, whereas the anterior spinothalamic tract fibres carry crude touch information. So the next ascending pathway is that of the spinocerebellar pathways. So I've highlighted these both in purple and lighter purple. So you've got the dorsal and ventral spinocerebellar tracts. So these tracts relay information from muscle and joint receptors to the cerebellum. And these tracts are examples of the pathways which carry subconsciously processed information. Whereas the dorsal columns the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus and the spinothalamic tracts carry consciously processed information which is processed in the somatosensory cortex. So these spinocerebellar tracts don't carry information that is consciously processed so they don't have the three neuron sequence which I described in the previous part of the tutorial. So basically you've got information coming via these tracts from muscle spindles and, spindles and Golgi tendon organs and this information is relayed to the cerebellum and allows for the control of posture and to coordinate muscular movements. So now we'll take a look at the descending tracts. So, so these descending tracts start in the cerebral cortex and brainstem and descend down the spinal cord to innervate muscles. So they are involved in controlling movement, muscle tone, spinal reflexes, and also have um, an ability to modulate some of the sensory information which is brought up via the ascending tracts. So essentially, the ascending tracts bring in information from the, sensory, from the environment c relating to sensory information, and the descending tracts carry information from the center, the brain, to 
act in response to this sensory information. So it's useful to think of these descending tracts as pyramidal or extrapyramidal. And pyramidal just refers to tracts which pass through the medullary pyramids. So the pyramidal tracts are the corticospinal tracts. So you've got the lateral corticospinal tract and the anterior corticospinal tract, which I've highlighted in orange. So the corticospinal tracts are important to know about because they convey voluntary skilled movements originating from the motor cortices of the brain. So the lateral corticospinal tracts carry motor information destined for the limbs and it's important in skilled voluntary movement. The ventral corticospinal tract carry axial motor information. So the axial muscles are those central muscles which aren't limb muscles essentially. So you may start to notice the significance of the naming of these tracts. So remember the descending tracts we talked about the spinothalamic tract and the spinocerebellar tract, you'll notice that the first part of the name of the tract relates to the first where the tract begins and the second part of the name of the tract relates to where that tract ends. So spinocerebellar, it starts in the spinal cord and it projects the cerebellum. And then spinothalamic starts in the spinal cord, projects to the thalamus. So you know that they are ascending tracts. And now we've just talked about the corticospinal tract. So it starts in the motor cortex and projects down into the spinal cord. So it's a descending tract. So there's always clues and hints in the names. So just to cover some of the extra pyramidal tracts, you've got the rubrospinal tract, which I've highlighted in red. So this originates in the red nucleus of the midbrain tegmentum and uh, is responsible for limb flexors. And then you've got the tectospinal tract, which I've highlighted in light purple here. So it's, it's seen here kind of intermingled with the medial longitudinal fasciculus. But the tectospinal tract originates from the superior colliculus of the midbrain. So the clue's in the name again. So the tecto part of this word refers to the tectum, which consists of the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. So fibres from the tectospinal tract mainly terminate in the cervical segment of the spinal cord and carry information responsible for movements in response to visual sensory information. And then we've got the vestibulospinal tract, so this is highlighted in bright pink, and this originates in the vestibular nuclei in the pons and the medulla. So you've got a lateral vestibulospinal tract and a medial vestibulospinal tract. So highlighted here is the, in pink is the lateral vestibulospinal tract. So the vestibulospinal tract receives information from the bony labyrinths and the cerebellum relating to balance and posture. And this pathway allows for the control of extensor motor neurons in, in order to maintain posture. And then lastly, we've got the reticulospinal tract which arises, as the name suggests, from the reticular formation of both the pons and the medulla. So you've got a medial or ponto reticulospinal tract, which is the one highlighted here in green. And then you also have the medullary reticulospinal tract, which aren't shown here, but I'll just draw them on the rough location of these fibres. So you'd have the medullary reticulospinal tract fibres in this region here. So that's the lateral reticulospinal tract. And this tract, the reticulospinal tract, is responsible for reflexes, muscle tone, and is also involved with the respiratory and circulatory system. So that's an overview of the different ascending and descending spinal cord tracts.